Hi guys, it's Emily, and today I'm here to bring you my first wrap-up of 2017. Um, I have eight books to show you, three I'm going to talk about, you know, in depth, and then the other five I'm just going to show you. So the first book that I read for the 2017 was Tender is the Night by F. Scott Fitzgerald, and I think I told you in my last video that this was the last book on my TBR that I had added in um, 2012, so I wanted to get it off my shelf, and I'm glad I read it because I actually, like, didn't like it at all. Um, I didn't really care about the characters, and I felt like it dragged a lot, so this was a two-star read for me, which is kind of sad since it was the first book of the year, but anyway, yeah, I was just not the book for me. This book follows, um, Dick and Nicole Driver. They're a married couple, and they own a, like, resort in the French Riviera and they have a lot of friends that come visit them there and they're very friendly people and you know they're seeing this, this like really great couple who's been married for a long time and all that and everybody supposedly loves them and then one day an actress Rosemary comes and she's about 18 and she and Dick um have an affair and they fall in love with each other and so it's sort of like you see their marriage when it's good, and then you see their marriage when it's falling apart, and you also go back and see the beginning of their marriage, and this part is what bothered me, because you see that Dick was Nicole's doctor at the Menstrual Institute, because she was having some um, mental problems, and she was sent by her family to be cared for by Dick, and they fall in love and get married, and I don't know, it just was really weird, you know, it went against patient, doctor-patient, like, confidentiality, and I don't know, it's just kind of creepy, and I didn't enjoy, um, like, very much of this book at all, and there were random things that happened that you, like, never got any explanation for, like, somebody died, and you, they just died, and then they're never heard from again, and you, you, like, don't get any closure on that, and it's kind of weird. And anyway, I just did not enjoy this book. Um, you know, I've read The Great Gatsby, and I've read This Side of Paradise, but I read both of those for school, and I had a professor that was very passionate about Fitzgerald's work, but I think reading it on my own, I was just not impressed with this book. This is um, Fitzgerald's, like, last published novel, you know, like, completed novel when he was when he was alive, and I don't know, I just felt like the writing wasn't as good as um, it was in The Great Gatsby or The Side of Paradise. So yeah, I didn't enjoy this, sorry to say. But then I picked up um, Z, A Story of Zelda Fitzgerald by Therese Ann Bauer, and this was from my booktube Secret Santa Carol's Corner. Um, I showed this off in my unboxing video, my unboxing vlog. But anyway, this is just a fictional account of the life of Zelda Fitzgerald, and I liked it more than Tender is the Night, but it, it sort of had the same problem, because Dick and Nicole are both in the 1920s, you know, like, living it up, partying, and this is sort of the same way. You know, Zelda and Scott are very, like, they move around a lot, and they party a lot, and they do crazy things, and you see them start in, like, 1918 during World War I when Scott is stationed in uh, Montgomery, and that's how he meets Zelda, and then they get married and move to New York, and I don't know, it, so the, th the main thing that, the, the thing that happens at the start of the book that sort of affects the entire book is Scott is meant to be sent to the front, and then, like, right before he's going to go, the arm the treaty is signed declaring the war over, and so he never gets to go, and then he's surrounded by these, like, writers, you know, in, like, Hemingway and Don Passos and all those people who went and wrote, like, things about their experience, and they sort of consider him to be less of a man because he didn't go fight, even though it wasn't his fault, and so it's kind of ridiculous, you know, he's always trying to be manly, and he sleeps with other women, and he's got a drinking problem, and then Zelda, you know, because Scott's very controlling, you know, he doesn't really let her have any say in what they do, and she doesn't know anything about their finances, so a lot of times they're, like, poor, but she doesn't know that, and so she's, like, buying a bunch of stuff. I don't know, it just was, 
it's just sad. It's like Zelda was caught at a time when, you know, she had very little agency in her life. And, you know, she wants to be a writer and she can't because Scott is jealous of her writing and doesn't want her to get credit for it. And it's just a sad situation. So I enjoyed this, but it doesn't, it makes you feel sad and depressed at the end because you just feel bad for Zelda that she's had such a hard life and, and uh, I mean, not hard because she is wealthy, but, you know, hard because she, like, really wanted to have a lot more agency and she's not allowed to do it. And, yeah, so I would recommend this, but it is sad and it's, you know, it's not as, it's not as fun as you think it's going to be based on, like, the premise. And also, this book is very nice. It's got the French flaps and the deckled edges and, you know, I know, a lot of people have books that really like that. I don't think I've had very many books with that kind of thing, but it's really, it's a lovely book and it feels very nice. So yeah, I would recommend this if you like historical fiction, but again, it is very sad if you're, so just forewarning on that account. So then, the next book I read was my first nonfiction of the year, and this was The Civil Wars of Julia Ward Howe, and Julia Ward Howe wrote the Battle Hymns of the Republic, which is the famous Civil War song, and that's like all I knew about her before I picked this up. I think I saw this on Goodreads, I'm not sure, but um, this is about her life, it's a biography of her, and she grew up in New York City, and she was very wealthy, and sort of just like Zelda Fitzgerald, she had a lot of things she wanted to do that she was not able to do because of the time she lived in. Um, she had a very controlling father, and then she married Samuel Gridley Howe, who was also very controlling and who didn't want her, you know, writing or making money or doing anything like that. And so it sort of split up into two parts where she starts out being controlled by the men of her life, and then once she writes the Battle Hymn of the Republic, she becomes very famous and very popular, and so she gets invited to give these, like, talks and to go all around the country and recite her poem, and so she sort of stands up for herself, and she tells her husband that she's going to do this, and her husband resents her for it, and they had a very unhappy marriage, like, throughout their life, and that was really sad, you know. She tried to be a good wife, but she just didn't have the temperament to be a, you know, a passive, stay-at-home kind of wife that was expected during this era. And then after her husband died, she lived for 30 more years. And so she did have a very, a very exciting um, 30 years after her husband died. Um, she traveled around, like I said, and did a lot of stuff like that. I really enjoyed this book. I learned a lot about Julia Ward Howe, and I also enjoyed it because um, I love transcendentalism, and there's a lot of transcendentalists in here because she and her husband were both considered intellectuals, and they were very involved in, you know, the intellectual movements of their time, one of which was transcendentalism. So, you know, you get, like, Ralph Lowe Anderson, um, Louisa May Alcott, you know, Theodore Parker, just all these really cool um, transcendentalist people. Um, yeah, I just really enjoyed this book. So if you're looking for a really quick nonfiction read about a intellectual woman of the late 1800s, I would recommend this. This is only 300 pages, and really the last 50 pages are like notes and references, so it's really only a 250-page book, which is not bad at all for nonfiction, and it's very readable, and it just came out in 2016, so it's a fairly new, um, book, and, you know, it's sort of one of those, like, feminist histories talking about, like, famous women who haven't really been looked at through feminist eyes yet. So, yeah, I would definitely encourage you to check this out. So, next five books I want to show you, I'm just going to run through real quick because I don't have much to say about them. They're all, there's four graphic novels and then one mini book of poetry. So, I but was at the work, and I found that found out that we had just gotten these in, the Babysitter Club graphic novels. And of course, I read like all of the Babysitter's Club when I was a kid, so I definitely had to read these. So I did. I got volume one, which is Christie's Great Idea, and then I got volume two, which is The Truth About Stationy, and then I got volume four, which is. Claudia and Mean Janin, or 
Janine, maybe? I don't, I've never known how to say this name, even though I've read it like a million times in the book. But Janine, and there is a volume three called Marianne Saves the Day, but I did not get that one because it was checked out, but I did read it on my iPad. I checked it out from Overdrive, and you can read it on the iPad, so I did, and it was my first experience reading a book on the iPad, and it was pretty fun. So yeah, I read these, and if you're looking for a graphic novel, novel series that will um, it give you nostalgia, a boost, you should definitely check these out because they're all really cute. They were originally published in like 2007, I believe, but they just came out with some new editions, so that's why my library just got them. But yeah, I really love them. They are so cute, and all four of them are really great. And you know, they're just like the books, only in graphic novel form. So that, they're really cute. And then the last book I'm going to mention was um, I Could Pee on This and Other Poems Written by Cats. And this is just a little cute um, poetry book. Uh, it's got the bookmark in it, but I already finished it. And it's got um, poems that were written by cats and then like pictures of kitties. So there's a kitty. And there's a kitty, and there's, oh, there's a kitty. There's are just really cute um, poems, and some of them are funny, and some of them are sweet, and they're just all about little poems, the little things that cats do, like pushing things off counters, or peeing on your sweater, or um, trying to get outside and immediately wanting to be left back in, or like clawing your face so that you'll wake up and feed them. So it's just a really cute little cat book, and this is another book that I was get, um, checking in when somebody brought it back at the library, and I was like, oh, I have to get this, so yeah, it was really cute, and I know that, like, Elizabeth from Wesley Fayless Books has read this and mentioned it on her channel, so yeah, if you're a cat lover, you should check it out, because it's really cute. So that's all I've read in the first part of January. Um, I'm currently reading A Wrinkle in Time by Madeline La Ingle, and I hope to finish that. I got four books, including A Wrinkle in Time, on my January TBR that I still haven't read. But we'll see if I get to all of them. If not, I'll just move some on to February's TBR. Um, those five books I just mentioned sort of put me off my TBR. But, you know, it's work. I'm going to try to catch up. I am, st I am restarting school this week, though. I was off for the holiday, so I'll be doing work and school, um, and so I might not have as much time to read, but that's okay, because like I said, I, I don't really have a firm reading goal this year. I did set my um, good read goal for 52 books, but that was because it annoys me how there's like that big banner that's like, set your reading goal until you do it, and it's like, I don't know. So anyway, I set it at 52 books, but I'm not like really focused on that this year. So in that regard, I probably should just count these books that I just mentioned, but I probably won't until like later on in the year and I see how much progress I've made. So yeah, um, I hope everyone's been having a good January and I'll be back with another wrap up soon. Bye!